Good morning. Yeah, I'm all on my lonesome this morning. I'm not. Sean and Otis are just walking round the corner. Uh, we're in North Kilworth Marina. We stayed here last night because today Silver Fox is coming out of the water and having all the bottom of the boat repainted, the blacking as we call it, which is like the protective coat that we replace every couple of years. Now underneath our blacking we've got a two-part epoxy coating which is like a double layer of protection. So it doesn't really matter if the blacking gets knocked but it is good to have it renewed every couple of years. So I'm just heading towards the service bay where the boat's going to be lifted out of the water by a crane. It's going to be jet washed down to get all the grime and algae and everything else that might be stuck to it off. And then once it's dried and prepared we're going to re-black it and then give it another coat and I don't know how many coats and then it's going to take a couple of days and then we'll be put back in the water. So Sean's walking Otis round to the service point and I'm going to meet him there in a minute. We've got to move the boat into the service dock where a 35 ton crane and a couple of strapping lads are waiting for us. The straps that will lift the boat out are already submerged in the water. Now before we lift the boat out we've got to make sure everything on board is secure. So everything on shelves and the bits in the bathroom are all been put in the sink and Sean's wine is very safely stowed in the washing up bowl in the galley. We've taped the cupboard door shut and we've taken Otis off the boat already because, well if we don't mention it somebody will ask. Once we've got the boat in position in the dock, Sean switches off the engine, fastens up the pram cover and jumps off and then the lads are ready to carefully, he says, hopefully, lift us out of the water. Once the boat's secure, we can get the jet washer on the hull. Now the reason he's doing this while the boat's hanging over the water in its harness is so that all the algae and grime and bits and pieces just wash straight back into the water. Inch by inch, the lads move the boat forwards, away from the water, so they can really get into the nooks and crannies and blast off every last bit of gunk. The grey paint you can see on the hull is the top layer of the two-pack epoxy I was talking about earlier, and it's still looking grey after two years. With all the muck washed off, the lads can now move Silver Fox away from the service dock and up towards the side where she's going to dry off for a few hours before the first coat of blacking goes on. It takes a bit of skill and tricky manoeuvring to get the crane and our 16 ton bow into position and with the wheels just inches from the water, one wrong move or an ill-timed sneeze and we might be back in the water along with the crane. Finally we secure on the wooden blocks and the huge straps can come off and we can all go and get a cuppa. While the boat's drying off we've left Otis to have a nap and we're going to nip next door to North Kilworth Wharf where we're going to meet up with an old friend. <laughs> oh, hello guys, you alright? 
Can we come aboard? Yeah, come aboard. Come on. With property prices in London way out of his budget, James decided to buy a narrowboat in 2020, and he wanted to have it in the water and ready to live on by last Christmas. But a year later, and he's still working hard. I know how stressed I would have got doing all this. Do you not kind of regret it thinking back to where you started? No, I don't think that at all. Um, I, I, I sometimes see other boats coming up and I think, my word, for 25 grand, you get yourself something made in the 1990s without holes in the bottom. Um, but no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm delighted with what I've done. I've learned so much. I've had an amazing year here. Um, I didn't expect to do half the work on the boat that I did, but, but I know every square inch of this boat now. And, you know, I've spent way over the odds, um, but I know at the same time, I've saved so much. I've met so many amazing people uh, so yeah and i know the boat intimately so um no i'm i'm happy with how it is i wouldn't have changed a thing you can see all the hard work that you've put in what are you most proud of um <laughs> sean <laughs> you sean sean's pointing to the wine cellars um to, i do like them that the, the thing i'm most proud about is the sign writing and that wasn't even done by me so i guess that says everything i think uh the the, the stainless steel bend in the fireplace i liked i do like the whole fireplace i quite like the layout the walk through layout and the way kind of the boat changes direction a little bit like most renovation projects, there's usually a few surprises along the way. And the biggest one for James was when his boat started taking on water. There was literally a hole in his boat. I remember watching when he started getting the holes in the boat. I remember like my hands sweating, just watching it and thinking, what is he gonna do? The worst thing about it was not knowing where the hole was. Um, ideally the hole be in the middle of the boat in the in the base plate the worst thing was a bit it'd be somewhere along the rubbing strips across the boat and we were chasing it and chasing it that would have been the worst thing fortunately we found the hole really I mean obviously Paul shoved a screwdriver through it so that but yeah we found the hole really really quickly it, which just meant you know we could identify you know the, the, the solutions for it and then it was just a case of working out how to fix it yeah Luckily, James managed to get the hole fixed with a little help from his YouTube followers. And after a year of hard work and a few dramas along the way, what's next now that his boat's almost ready to live on? Kind of finish the boat as much as it can do, kind of get it as seaworthy as it can, and then start the journey down to London, um, where I'll be continuously cruising kind of around London to northwest London, out to Hertfordshire, that kind of way. And yeah, move up and down the cut like everyone else. Can't wait, it's gonna be exciting. I've got a lot of admiration for people like James who have got the guts to take on such a huge challenge. It must feel amazing to be able to overcome so many obstacles and I think Sean really likes the wine coolers he's built into the bilge, so much so that he's helping himself to a leaving gift. Hey, come back with my biscuits you Come back! The boat's been out of the water for about three hours. It's been jet washed and it's got all the muck and algae and bits and pieces that we don't want under the new blacking on there. The original epoxy coating, the two-part epoxy, has done really well. To say it's been in the water just over a couple of years, it's still intact, it's protected the steelwork and according to the guys doing the job, the steelwork looks like new. There's no signs of pitting or damage anywhere. So it's been a couple of hours since that was done. The boat's now dry and it's time to apply the first coat of new blacking. While that first coat of paint is drying, Otis and I went out for a paddle in the kayak. Because he's lived with us on the boat since he was eight weeks old, he's really comfortable around the water. He does respect it though. A lot of people ask us if he jumps in, and he honestly never has done. He is wary of it. But he does love coming out in the kayak, just laying there relaxed, watching the world go by. Come on then. 
That's a good boy. Good morning. Morning. Day three Ooh. in the Silver Fox house. <laughs> I still need to say it like that, Geordie, don't I? Uh, the final coat got done yesterday and it actually looks like brand new. We it actually does. We got some footage of it yesterday, but to be honest, there's not much to say. It's like watching paint dry, literally. <laughs> it's like watching paint dry. Although somebody did say in a vlog that we could actually make a vlog about watching paint dry and it'd be interesting. No, it wouldn't. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but here's a bit of footage of him doing it. I mean, just in case you want proof that he actually did it, yeah. here's a little bit of footage of him actually putting the second coat on. And look. It literally looks like new again. Looks all pretty. Uh, the anodes, before you start asking, uh, are all right for another couple of years yet. Yeah. So the next time it comes out for blacking, the anodes will need doing, but they're actually absolutely fine for now. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that people ask about is the underneath. Why aren't you doing the underneath? Well, that's because most Can't of the canals it. are so... <laughs> that's a good point, actually. Most of the canals are so shallow, it gets scraped off within yeah. a few days anyway. It's a big debate, some do, some don't. It has been treated and we had a look underneath and it is still black from the original treatment. Yeah. And there's no pitting or damage at all to the base. It looks like new underneath. Yeah. So we're leaving that as it is. Today, day three, the big crane's getting ready and warmed up, a bit like you. <sighs> Takes a long time to get me warmed up now. <laughs> change the subject quickly. We're going to take Silver Fox back up using the crane back around. We're going to put it back in the water and we're going to go and moor up for a couple of days. Yeah. And edit this vlog. So far, so good. We're off the wooden blocks and away from the building. Now we've just got to position the crane back over the water and gently lower Silver Fox back in. I know these lads have done this hundreds of times before, but it did feel a bit like when we first launched the boat. The nerves were definitely going until we can see it safe and sound in the water. Now we've just got to get it back to the jetty. And we're back. We're all done. We're back on pontoon number I6C. That gives you an idea of how big this place is. <laughs> it's huge. Uh, so the blacking lasted approximately 1 minute 48 seconds. Yeah, the wind got hold of me. <laughs> Luckily, it was only a few reeds. So there might be just some, like, brush marks. It's all right, actually. There's nothing There's there. nothing. Uh, we hope this has given you an insight onto how we do the blacking on narrow boats. There's different ways you can haul the boat out of the water. Some use a tractor, some use like a mechanical thing on like a railway. Yeah, they do. Some use a crane. Some use a crane. I don't like the crane. No. It's a bit, it's a bit too high and wobbly for me. See, I'm picking my fingers already. Yeah, stop it. Sorry. Uh, but that's how it's done. We normally do that every two or three years. It's yeah. been two years and four months yeah. for us. And we have done a lot of traveling as you've seen. And so hopefully, in another two years and four months, it might be a different boat we're hauling out. It probably will be. Hauling out sounds like hauling oats, doesn't it? No. No, it doesn't. <laughs> if you've enjoyed the vlog, and we hope you have, and you're not already, please subscribe for more of this kind of stuff every week. Uh, hit the like button, the thumbs up, and if you hit the notifications bell, YouTube will let you know every time we release a new video, which is... Four o'clock on a Friday, I'm sorry, I forgot. He's done it often enough, hasn't he? <laughs> 
If you want to help support the channel, there's a link up above. Sean said, don't bob down on here because you might fall in. I might fall up. Or in the video description. Uh, people ask about the music we use in the vlogs. Uh, we put that in the video description too, if you're interested. And if you want to get hold of one of our 2022 calendars, there's also a link for that in the description. Yeah. The description's got more stuff in it than the vlog has this it has, week. It has this week, yeah. Uh, there's a boat over there called Cockney Rebel. <laughs> Wouldn't it be ace if Steve Harley owned it? That'd it be, would. I mean, somebody's going to comment now and say, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Right, we're off for a cuppa. See you next week. Bye. Ta-ra. You off? I'm off. <laughs>